This is my 2002 Mitsubishi Delica. I imported it from Japan and in this video I'll be converting it into an off-grid, off-road, go-anywhere 4x4 camper van and that is a lot of YouTube keywords so I expect this video to do very well. I have no experience with building anything so I'm sure there will be mistakes along the way. Oh no. But I did own a Ford Transit camper van for a few years so I know what I like and I know what I don't like. This isn't a van life channel, but lockdown has forced my hand. You see, usually I travel around with my cameras enjoying the wonders of landscape photography, hence the camper van. But I can't really do that at the minute. So this video is part one of four. Today, I'll be ripping out the rear seats, putting in a new floor, and building the framework for the furniture using profiled aluminium. Before doing anything, I needed a plan. Ideally, I would like a 3D model of my van layout. So I googled easy to use 3D software and found Tinkercad. Tinkercad is web-based, free and designed for school children. Perfect. I measured my van, measured the aluminium profile and built this 3D model. It was then simply a case of placing my order for the pre-cut lengths of aluminium. The seats came out without any problems as did the carpet and I used the carpet as a template for the wooden subfloor. A quick cut with the jigsaw and it was a perfect fit. My plan was to use the bolts from the seats to hold down the wooden floor but unfortunately these bolts weren't long enough and it was impossible for me to find longer replacements. In the end I cut smaller pieces of wood and attached all of these using the furniture bolts and then I would glue and screw the subfloor on top of these smaller bolts. Now that the floor is roughly in place what I'm doing is marking out where my furniture is going to go and I'm using my camera bag as a guide because this is going to be the biggest item of cargo that I carry in the back of my van and I want to make sure it fits. I tidy up my wooden subfloor and give it a quick coat of primer for protection and whilst the primer dries it's time for me to lay down my insulation. Bear in mind this is the middle of winter, the days are very short so this video is going to go from light to dark many many times. The insulation you can see here is just a foil bubble wrap from Amazon. It offers a little bit of insulation, a little bit of a thermal barrier and a little bit of sound deadening. Now the compromise I have here is this is a small van so every millimetre is premium real estate so my floor, subfloor and insulation needs to be incredibly low profile so I can keep as much headroom as possible. The subfloor goes back in on top of the insulation. You can see that I've drilled holes in the subfloor which give me access to the bolts holding down those smaller pieces of wood. Those smaller pieces of wood are gonna be drilled into and I use these wood screws. They're essentially threaded bolts and they are much stronger than if I was to just drill a screw straight through one wood into another piece of wood. And for me, I want this to be safe but I also want it to be easily removable. So after way more faff than initially anticipated, that is the subfloor down and secured. I'm now laying my next level of flooring, which is this beautiful black rubber mat. It's thick, it's hard wearing, it's easy to work with, it's waterproof and it adds a little bit more sound deadening. Initially I was going to glue this down, but after laying it out I can see that that is really not necessary, so I simply place it on top of my wooden subfloor. Earlier on before my subfloor was finished, I wanted to make sure that my furniture was going to be the correct size, because if your furniture is too low profile you're not going to fit any storage underneath it but even worse if your furniture is too high you're going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be banging your head off the roof so I chucked in loads of cardboard plus my bouldering mat which would be my mattress and I sat down in the van sat down and tested out what it would be like to live in a van uh, yes I look like a bit of a pillock there's not an actual laptop there I'm just miming it but I just wanted to get a feel for it the best way to get a feel for the size of your van is to just get in there and put in fake furniture just like I did. And let me tell you, it pays off because you do learn a thing or two. Quick note to self, this where I'm sat now is gonna be my main seating area. So I've got more headroom because I'm in the middle of the van. This is where I'm gonna have my backrest cushions. But one problem I found, and exactly why I wanted to test it all out using cardboard, is this light here. This is where I was gonna have one of two spotlights. But by sitting in the comfy seat like I am now, the light is going to be right on my head. Um, so, yeah, need to rethink. All right, now I'll, uh, I'll get the B-roll. Okay. 
Let me interject here. Normally I'm quite good at talking to the camera because I've been doing this YouTube game a long time. But what you can see at the minute, all of the footage was never intended to be a series of van build videos. All I was going to do was one full montage video with voiceover and have it done with. But as I mentioned before, lockdown, the, oh, this is kind of my lockdown content. Um, so yeah, there, there we go. Um, but in a while, in a little bit, I stopped the voiceovers and we sort of phase into normal video mode. So uh, don't get used to these voiceovers too much. Because of the small space of this van, every millimetre has to be perfect and I mentioned before about my camera bag being of the utmost importance when it comes to storage, so I'm just making sure that it fits and that I'm happy with the height of the storage and the height of the seat. Now that I'm confident with all of my measurements, I go ahead, take the plunge and order all of the aluminium profile. Let me tell you, this stuff is genius. It's super strong, incredibly lightweight, and really easy to go together, just like Meccano. An idiot can do it, and we know that because I've done it. I put it together using two different types of brackets. This bracket here is an invisible bracket or a hidden bracket, and when you join two corners together, you can't see the bracket. The second type is this right angle bracket, which isn't invisible but is really quick and easy to install and requires no pre-planning at all. You just whack it in, unlike those hidden brackets where you kind of have to slide them into place beforehand and you know in, in some areas of the build that can get a bit complicated. It wasn't long before my first piece of furniture was complete. This is going to be my side kitchen unit. The face, which you can see when inside of the van, has those hidden brackets and the rear of the unit has those easier to install corner brackets. Now this, it may look like me just being an idiot, but actually I'm demonstrating how unbelievably incredible this aluminium profile is. Not only was I able to build this piece of furniture in about 15 minutes, but look how strong it is. Super strong and incredibly light weight. So after clowning around on my side unit for a bit, I pick it up and put it in the van and it is a perfect fit and it looks fantastic. So all I've got to do now is build the rest of the furniture. So this piece of framework that looks like a ladder that I've just put in the van, this is going to be my bed and my bench seat and it's actually going to wrap around and connect via other pieces of aluminium all the way to this side unit which I just built and put in the van. So that all of the framework is going to be interconnected as one big piece but it's also modular and very easy to take apart with a couple of bolts, bring in and out the van. So yeah, this, uh, this piece here I'm going to build inside of the van. So the legs that support the front facing side of the bed all have to be attached using those invisible brackets that you can see I've got to preload, I've got to slide them in and plan ahead. This is important because I'll be attaching cupboard doors to those legs so I can't have a big massive corner bracket blocking the door, making it look all ugly and out of shape. I want a nice clean right angle. So that's the front of the seating area done, that's the area that's going to be visible which is why I went for the awkward kind of preloaded invisible joiners. But now we're working on the back of the seating area which means I have these much easier to work with brackets and also I don't need to worry about the, finding the best side of the aluminium because well no one's ever going to see it. So now I've just got to bosh these on and then the frame will be almost done, it's much more simple than this side unit that I built. Um, yeah, much more simple. Okay. So I've never worked with this stuff before, this um, aluminium profile. It, I think I first saw it on YouTube, some guys made their vans out of it in America. It's called 8020, I think. It's basically extruded aluminium and it has these channels in it. And these channels can take a bolt that's like a T-shaped and it just slots in and then, well, yeah, it slots in and falls out, but 
slots in and then you can tighten a bolt onto it. Which means because of the channels, if you need to move anything, you can just loosen the bolt and slide it along. You know, you'd have another piece here that slides along and you can bolt almost any accessory to it and you get them cut to length to each millimeter. So it's really accurate. It's lightweight, it's strong. It's just absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, so I'm really happy and it just makes building the van incredibly easy. If this was wood and you made a mistake where your piece was off by a, a few centimeters or a few millimeters, you'd have to unscrew it and then move it along or cut it down or whatever. But this stuff is, uh, oh man, yeah, it's really, really, I mean, yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to, but once, you, once you're away, I feel like I can build anything. Like, <laughs> I do. I feel like I can build anything and it'll be usable and good. So after spending quite a long time building all of the framework inside of the van and feeling like it's complete, I'm now having second thoughts and I am quite concerned about safety. It's probably best if I show you, but essentially the frame of the bed consists of two long aluminium rails that run all the way from the back door to the driver's seat. Now I thought that was gonna give me a very sturdy frame, a solid build, but of course, if I was to have an impact in the back of the vehicle, or on the back of the vehicle, then those aluminium poles suddenly become spears. Do you know what I mean? Like they only need to shunt forward six inches and that's gonna go right through my back. And that's worrying. Now I'm not too concerned about the bar on the right hand side because that's gonna be double bolted to the wheel well, but it's still a bit worrying. But I am concerned about the left hand side. So what I'm gonna have to do is make some amendments. I was considering securing them down through the floor, but even still, I don't think that's good enough. What I need, I need some separation. I need to essentially create a break in the middle of those two long bars. That way, if there is an impact, there'll be a bit more room to absorb any kind of shockwave. <sighs> it's gonna be a pain. So I'm not uh, happy about it, but it's, uh, it feels much safer. I think it's just a mistake on my part. You know, I thought I planned it to a T, but uh, I didn't take into consideration what might happen if somebody slams into the back of me. So that's not good. But this, although it doesn't feel as structurally sound, which might sound odd, um, it feels a lot safer. There's a bit of flex in it, which means if anything hits the back now, I feel like the back end would just crumple rather than slam straight through into me. I'll show you exactly what I've done. The piece on the left-hand side that I cut away, that's gone. So there is a nice big gap between the rear crossbar and the long kind of outside edge of the bed. The inside edge of the bed, which is uh, the one over the wheel arch, the piece that I cut away there, I've actually dropped down by about six inches, which means I think, I, you know, I'm no engineer, but if something should crush into the back of my van, it's just gonna fold, rather than before it was here where it would shunt. So, poof, that's my thinking. Ah, <sighs> well, it's done now and, and I, I, it, do, it does feel a lot safer. So with the framework more or less complete and fitting nicely, I actually take it all out of the van again, which takes like five minutes, and I trim the back of the floor to give it a nice finish, and then I give the van a quick hoover, and you can see how spick and span it's all looking. Oh, come on, yes. So, uh, good news. A few pieces of good news as I climb into the van. Good news number one, shortly this video will be coming to an end. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna reflect in the editing suite, but uh, certainly filming it feels like it's taken an age. The second piece of good news is all of my framework is now complete. I've built an extra 
little cubby hole for the diesel heater that's going to go in. The third bit of good news is now that all the framework's done, it's stopped raining, it means I can fit my floor, which has arrived. And I've chosen a beautifully insulated cork floor let me show you so down here you can actually see all of the samples of the cork floor that i ordered all different colors and tones and what i've done is i've taken the samples and i've cut them down and i've used them to measure the length of the supporting legs because originally let me try and show you here originally i was going to get the floor and kind of cut it around the leg but because this is extruded aluminium you have this groove here and it would have been impossible to cut around there. So what I did is I shaved about 10 millimeters off each leg here. And my cork floor is gonna uh, slide underneath for a perfect finish. So that's what I've been up to. And this is the floor that I have decided on. So it's cork laminate. This is like a rusty kind of weathered finish, I suppose. Not too dark, but also not too light. But the beautiful thing about cork is its insulating properties. I've got my hand on it now and it feels like it's heated. It feels like it's heated. If I put my hand down here, it's cold and it ain't getting any warmer. If I put my hand on here, it's warm and it continues to get warmer. So it's a very good insulation and it's gonna look cool. So now all I need to do is fit it into here and then build the brackets to attach all the framing to the wheel arches down there and down there. And then flip me, I'm done because this <laughs> feels like it's been going on forever and I'm desperate to move on to the next phase of this van build. So that's the floor complete and I installed these brackets which ultimately will hold my very heavy battery. Just one more job to complete. So this is aluminium flat bar. This is what's gonna be used to make all of the furniture secure. Because at the minute, as it stands, the furniture is not bolted to anything. So if I have a crash or someone crashes into me, it's just gonna fly everywhere and end up killing me. So what I've done is, or what I'm doing, is I'm making four brackets. You see, when I took the seats out of the van, two of the rear seats were bolted through the wheel arches inside of the vehicle. So there's two good bolt holes that go straight through the chassis. So what I'm basically doing is I'm gonna take this aluminium flat bar, I'm going to take this cardboard template, which is the same size as the flat bar, and I'm gonna use this template to find the correct angle of dangle, or the correct bend, so that I can then fabricate four brackets for each of the bolt holes, which means the furniture will be secured four times to the chassis of the van, which will make it absolutely bomb-proof. Like bomb-proof, you know, it's gonna be bolted through, this, through the chassis. So that's what I'm doing now. And once this job is complete, I am happy to say that, that is the end of the phase one of the landscape photography adventure mobile for one which is <laughs> just what, I'm, what I'm probably not going to call this series. But you get, you get what I'm saying. So those four brackets that bolt the framework to the wheel arches, um, I'm absolutely amazed at how strong they are. I mean, this thing is just absolutely going nowhere. It's solid as a rock. Excuse the ambulance driving past. Oh yeah, that is as square as my Hasselblad 501cm. So we are very, very close to the end of this van build. I was originally gonna get these L-shaped brackets and fasten them to every single leg 
through the subfloor just for added security, but after checking my brackets and wrestling with the framework, I'm absolutely confident it's not necessary and it's not gonna go anywhere. However, this back end here towards the driver's seat, although laterally it's not moving, but there is a bit of play when you lift it up and down. Now I'm not concerned for safety, but what I am concerned about is driving down the road on any kind of bumpy roads. Yeah, that's gonna rattle. So what I'm gonna do is whack a couple of these brackets on the legs at the back end here, which will secure it to the subfloor and hopefully stop the bouncing. So that is phase one of the van build complete. And if you're interested in anything you've seen in today's video, I will be writing a blog post about this. And if it's not in the description below, it's because I haven't finished it yet, but it's coming. Make sure you tune in next week where you are gonna see the biggest transformation to this vehicle as I add doors, tabletops, hinges, drop down hatches and internal storage. It's all happening next week, so do not miss it. In fact, to make sure you don't miss it, why, why not just subscribe? Yeah, just, just subscribe. And of course, if you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. So, until next week, I will bid you farewell. <laughs>